This is ECG exercise number two, and this is also on page 85 of your uh, workbook. And so let's go through this step by step, uh, starting with the rate. The rate really varies here, and uh, somewhere between 100 and 150. Um, but if you've got uh, someone else teaching you this course, I would sort of defer to um, their judgment as well. Now, uh, in a rhythm like this, we, we see uh, QRS complexes that are close together, some that are further apart like these two here. What we want to try to do is, um, for gauging the heart rate, you know, for just a plain ECD strip here, you can take a six second strip and multiply that by 10. That's the, the easy way. Obviously the gold standard is to check, check a pulse. And when you have a rhythm like this, that's this irregular, you might want to check a pulse over 30 seconds. And um, uh, you know, to gauge your heart rate. But in this kind of rhythm, we have a range, and we want a range that is pretty representative of their overall heart rate. So we don't want to take a uh, heart rate based on the two uh, closest R waves and, and the two R waves that are furthest apart. We want to get something that's in the average range, and in, in my estimation, it's somewhere between 100 and 150. P waves are not discernible here. Uh, whatsoever. There are some, you know, bumps along the way, but there are no clearly discernible P waves, no consistency whatsoever. Um, and if there are no P waves, there's no PR interval. And uh, um, the QRS is narrow, is uh, less than 0.12 second. That's the key. And the ratio, if there are no P waves, is really not applicable. And here's the, the key finding. This rhythm is irregularly irregular. And uh, whenever you have an irregularly irregular rhythm without any discernible P waves, the interpretation of this is pretty straightforward. This is an atrial fibrillation. And the reporting of atrial fibrillation is somewhat unique. Unlike all other rhythms, where you describe the rhythm and the heart rate, and the heart rate is a single number, with atrial fibrillation, we generally describe a range. And the way we describe that is we say atrial fibrillation with a ventricular response of and in this case, I'll say 100 to 150. Now, again, as I said, we want to pick a range that is representative of the overall heart rate. A pulse over 30 seconds is your best bet. Um, but we don't want to pick extremes, because sometimes you'll see patients in atrial fibrillation where they have a heart rate that's sometimes at 40 and sometimes at 210. So we can't just say the patient, uh, you know, we can't contact a physician or it would be inappropriate for one physician to contact another physician and say the patient's in a natural fibrillation between 40 and 210 uh, because that doesn't really paint a clear picture because on the receiving end, you would be wondering, well, wow, that's an incredible range. Now are they mostly close to the 40 range or they're mostly close to the 210 range because in both cases, um, you know, that would suggest a patient who's fairly unstable, especially if they're in the 210 range. Um, so if they're only at 210 once, or very rarely, and most of the time they're in the 100, 150 range, that paints a much clearer picture. So um, we have a better idea of, you know, if that patient's sick, is, is the heart rate contributing or an issue, or is it not really the, the main problem? So we have to pick kind of an average heart rate range. And you'll recall from when I described atrial fibrillation before, um, don't let the baseline uh, be too much of a distraction because, you know, we can easily get sucked into these glitches, um, you know, these bumps here and a bump there and a bump here and a bump here. And uh, my kind of rule of thumb is, uh, you know, don't get sucked in by the glitches. This is probably um, ventricular repolarization, but who knows? I, I don't know. The, the main point here is that these R waves are not equidistant in any way, shape, or form. The rhythm is irregularly irregular, and we have a narrow QRS. So uh, this is clearly an atrial fibrillation. And as I said earlier, it's the most common dysrhythmia in the elderly. Um, and it's the one rhythm that you can pretty much interpret from just checking a pulse, because not only will it be irregularly irregular, but the volumes will be weak, strong, in between, uh, all over the place. So again. This is an AFib with a ventricular response of between 100 and 150.